Welcome to the Birth Journeys Podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Hoff, BSN RN. I am a wife, a mother of two, and a nurse specializing in the care of women and newborns. In this podcast, we will share powerful journeys of birth givers with the goals of lifting the veil on the birth experience, healing through sharing, and beginning an open conversation to strengthen trust and promote transparency between birthing people and healthcare providers. Hello. Today I have with me Steph Sellen. Steph is the mother of six, soon to be seven. She's a real estate agent and the host of the Real Live Real Estate Real Deal podcast. And she is here to tell her birth stories and the lessons she has learned with each birth that have helped her master the birthing process. Steph, welcome and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I can't wait to hear what you have to say (laughs) and all the things that you've been through and learned from all that fun stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of how how much time do we have? <laughs> Six <laughs> I booked two hours. <laughs> oh, God. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to share it all. I got to be honest, once I knew I was doing this, I had to like go through like my Facebook posts and the kids is the books. I didn't really film out a whole lot, but just to remind myself, because I've been giving birth for almost 20 years now. And I, mm. I couldn't remember a lot of the stuff. So I've been kind of studying for for this. That, I love that. I love that yeah. you've been studying. <laughs> yeah, I had to remind myself of everything that happened because they kind of blurred together. So amazing. Yeah. Well, so okay, how, you said twenty years. Wow. So you yeah. have your oldest is twenty. Well, she's eight. I said about twenty years, but she's eighteen. She I just turned it, eighteen. Got it, got it. Yeah. And how old were you when you got pregnant with her? And twenty. What was the story there? Okay, cool. Yeah, I was so twenty. Then- I was really young. Um, we were actually planning on getting married, and then I got pregnant, so we moved the wedding back. And I, I had ended up having her a month after I turned 21. So wow. I didn't even get to have a 21st birthday. <laughs> I was pregnant, but that's been Aww. my life for 18 years. I'm always pregnant. So no biggie. Oh my goodness. So then what kind of, what was that birth like? And that was probably the, the most traumatic, awful birth because back then you didn't really have Facebook and message groups and like people to learn from. Like I, yeah. you were pretty much on your own. And I didn't even know like what a midwife or a doula was back then. When I got pregnant, I just asked like my mom and her friends who they used and they recommended this OB and like his office was dark and dingy and I, it was, it was scary. He was scary. And with that pregnancy, like I don't remember a whole lot, but I remember at the end I had terrible swelling, like awful Mm. swelling. Like you could grab my leg and your handprints would be there forever. And I questioned it and he, he kept saying I was fine. It was normal. And I went overdue about 41 weeks with her and he finally decided to induce me because he's, I just developed preeclampsia. I think I had preeclampsia well before he diagnosed me, but I didn't, I didn't know anything about preeclampsia. I had no idea because I was 20 and young and dumb and never went through that before. So he, he ended up inducing me and I felt awful because I had to go to the hospital like 10 o'clock that night and I didn't know what was going on. I knew I was being induced. So like my mom, my grandma, my whole family went with me to the hospital at 10 o'clock that night. And they're like, no, no, it's going to be a while. So everyone else went home but my husband. And that morning, I remember they they started like the server deal or whatever that night. And then they they started the Pitocin at like, I don't know, sometime in the morning. And everyone was calling and checking to see where I was progressing. And I wasn't. I was still like zero centimeters. Nothing was happening. So then they kept up in the Pitocin. And I remember between like 10, 30, 11, somewhere around there. My husband went out to call everybody to tell him, you know, it's going to be a while. I think they checked me around then. I may have been two or three centimeters dilated. And so he had left to call everybody. And the nurse had came in a minute before at my Pitocin. And it was like a half hour. I was kind of by myself. And it was the most excruciating pain I've ever been through. I couldn't even get the bell to call the nurse. Couldn't move. I remember laying in bed, staring at the floor. But I I don't know if I passed out because the pain was so much or what. But I felt like I was like out of my body because the pain was awful. And Dustin finally came in like 20 minutes later and he knew something was wrong. And I said, I need help. So he went and got the nurse and she took forever to come in. And I ended up, she was crowning. So within uh, like 45 minutes, I went from two centimeters to 10 and she was crowning. That sounds intense. It was very, I thought I was going to die. Like it was awful. And so when the nurse came in, I can can remember her to this day. She was a little old lady. Her name was Kitty. And I remember her calling somebody and saying, I need help in here. I have a young mom who's never had birthing classes. She doesn't know what she's doing and she's ready to push. Like, oh my God, I'm going to die. This is awful. My nurse is freaking out. I'm freaking out. My husband was freaking out because he didn't know what was wrong. He knew I was like in a lot of pain. And I ended up like three pushes later, she was here at 1133. 
But he wow. went out to call everybody like around 11 and I was by myself. And I don't know, that last upage of Pitocin just sent it. And I went from three centimeters to 10 in like 20 minutes and had her. It was awful. It was so scary. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was the worst. So yeah, that, that was hers. So after hers, I refused to get induced. It took me a very long time to be able to be okay with being induced. Because that was the most traumatic and scary thing I've ever been through. And it was so painful. It was awful. Well, you were um, by yourself and you'd never... Yeah, completely by myself. Prepared. Nobody checked on me. Dustin went out to call people. Like, oh my God, it was. I thought I was going to die. Yeah. <laughs> it was awful. I but, mean, um, I would imagine that if you've never had any preparation and nobody's told you what to expect and... Yeah, yeah. You're going to think you're going to die. I get that nobody <laughs> thought I was going to go because, I mean, they just checked me. But, yeah, it was... It was scary. <laughs> I bet. Did you tear at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I had second degree tears. And then with, they had with to that repair one. it. Yeah. Yep. Did they numb you up for that? God, I don't remember. You don't remember. I, don't, I don't remember that. That was 18 years ago. I would, I would hope imagine so. imagine that if you <laughs> didn't remember, you probably yeah. got numbed up. <laughs> right. Yep. I would imagine. That would Let's be my guess. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was my first birth experience. So you didn't give up after that? No, I should have. Firstly, should have. No, I did not. Actually, I always wanted two girls. I don't know. I'm, my mom had two girls. I kind of wanted two. I just wanted two. But here we are with my seven. Yeah, I was going to say, but here we are with all <laughs> seven. Yeah. Yep. I gave up a two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then my second, I went into labor naturally with him. Thank goodness. I remember being at the host, a different hospital. We were visiting my husband's grandpa. And um, it was like eight o'clock at night where we had to leave because it was late. And I remember feeling a contraction. So we went home, got my one daughter, took her to my mom's house, then went to the hospital. And it was very, it didn't go near as fast as that one because they didn't have Pitocin because it was very natural, but no, no epidural, no nothing. And I, I think I had him, I know I had him at 244 in the morning, but I felt my first contraction at 8 p.m. So once I'm in labor, I go pretty pretty quickly and everyone says that's great but that's a lot of pain in a short amount of time <laughs> yeah it's a lot it's very intense yeah. yeah between the two births did you switch ob's or did i did you... yes by that after that experience i did more research and stuff and i went to midwives Ooh. Um, yeah they were what fantastic. was that like what was the did they prep um, you any better Yes, amazing. They they were a thousand times better. Always answered my questions, asked me questions, got to know me and even my daughter. They were great. So after that, I was like, I will never have another baby with an OB. It will always be midwives as long as I can. It will yeah. always be midwives. When I was given birth that time, I remember the midwife. And every time I pushed, she'd go, excellent, excellent. And I just remember seeing stars. I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. She's like encouraging me and being sweet and kind with that other nurse was like she doesn't know what she's doing thanks yeah way to set someone up for failure <laughs> yeah it was awful so yeah i love my midwives i, I love midwives that's my that's my go-to now so is a midwife in a hospital yeah or were you at a birthing center at a hospital okay, they work cool. with an ob but yeah 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 not that's every me. place has that option i work at one hospital that has that and one that doesn't um, oh yeah i just i love that setup because you can do everything in one place yep usually there's two or three midwives at all times there and you see all three of them one kind of takes over i feel like for the most part but the other two will come in and see you and touch base and i've loved all my midwives it's amazing yeah, yeah. so first birth was kind of quick but terrible yeah second birth was kind of quick but only terrible towards the end when you're ready to push. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you were more prepared for it. Yeah, yep. And I knew how to push. I knew what I was doing. Yeah, the second birth. I mean, other than the pain, because it was natural. It was great. Everything went as planned. So my first three, they were all just about two years apart. My first daughter was born February 10th. My son was born February 7th, two years later. And then my daughter was born January 7th, two years later. So it was almost all two years. It was really weird. But with her, I don't remember why they were going to induce me, but they wanted to induce me. And I think it might have been my blood pressure was climbing and they wanted me to go right then to the hospital to be induced. And I said, I can't. Like I was, I was freaking because I didn't want to be induced with Pitocin. I was mm. terrified. And I said, I can't. I got kids at home. I got to do stuff. Can I come back later? And they're like, well, we're scared if you leave, you're not going to come back. I'm like, I promise I will come back. But I just, I can't do it right now. So I went home. And I waited for my husband to get home and we got the kids ready to go to my parents and 
we went to the hospital that night. And I think the fear of Pitocin put me into labor because by the time I got there, I was contracting and I was already four centimeters. I didn't even know it. And that morning I was not because they checked me to see about the induction and whatever. And I was not progressing at all. But by the time we went in there that night, I was at four centimeters. So I think the fear of being induced put me into labor and I ended up having her naturally, no, no epidural. But by that time, like I, I was comfortable with my midwives. I knew what I was doing. And I was just so glad I did not need Pitocin. I remember almost crying when I got, and they said, you're four centimeters. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> like, I was so scared. But hers, hers was very, very easy. I had her at 12 something and we got to the hospital at 10. So wow. I think it was 1248. So hers was really quick also. But she was born with a rare syndrome. It was called Cousin syndrome. It, it affects your skull and your face. Your bones fuse together prematurely. And so mm-hmm. when she was born, she looked a little different. So the pediatricians wanted me to go and be seen. So her her birth, to be honest, like I don't remember a whole lot because by the time she was three months old, she had to have major skull surgery. So like I just don't remember a lot about her like newborn, like just her. It's all it's always about her syndrome and and that kind of stuff. But after her, uh, we were told if we had any other kids, there'd be a fifty percent chance they'd have the syndrome. So after her, I thought we were done. But we've never planned any pregnancies, and I know everyone, you know. They always give you a hard time about, don't you know how that happens? But my schedule, my ovulation schedule, it'll be perfect for months. And then it'll just throw in a weird period and then I get pregnant. So we end up having more. So that's how, that's how that happened. But yeah, hers was very natural, nice, quick. I was supposed to be induced and I went naturally. So that was cool. That's really interesting um, because a lot of times fear can stop the labor process. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it no, really, it really actually, cortisol. it's happened before. It, it happened again with my oh. next pregnancy. Okay, <laughs> yeah, they. You uh, fear. <laughs> yeah, I guess I had to go in for a non-stress test, and my blood pressure was uh, going up. And this was my fourth. And again, they said that they they were going to induce me, and I tried to not get induced, but they put me and hooked me up, and I was I started contracting on my own, so I didn't need. I didn't need Pitocin with him either. Thank you, baby. I wonder Jesus. if maybe your blood pressure just goes up when you're in labor. That's what I'm, I wonder that because my last one that happened, I don't know if you want me to skip ahead, but that, that's exactly what happened with my last one. My blood pressure was up and, but they did do Pitocin, but by then I had an epidural. But yeah, it's weird. But with, with that fourth one, I want an epidural. I'm like, you know what? I've, I've done this. I've proved myself. I was scared of the needle. And I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm not scared anymore. I want an epidural. So when the contractions started getting pretty painful and I was six centimeters, they were putting the epidural in and the contractions were really bad then. And I had told him like, something's not right. I can't, I can't do this. And I started leaning to the side and the doctor's yelling at me and I'm like, I can't. And so then they yelled at the midwife to come in and the midwife and my husband ran in and my husband said, holy F word. <laughs> Because his head was out. Well, I'm off to the side and they're like, they're still trying to give me the epidural. I did like, just get it out of my back. I need to push. So he was coming out as they were trying to administer the epidural. So I didn't really get one, but (laughs) no, you didn't. (laughs) Oh, not at all. But they, they checked me right before then. I feel like now that I've done it enough, once my water breaks, I'm going to be pushing within 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like it's just it's it's just how fast it goes, and they should have known that. <laughs> but, but now they do. Now they know. They do. Yeah. So did your um, water break with the first three? No. And then you, oh okay. no, they, I mean they 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 broke my they break my water. I never had my water break naturally ever. It's always been at the hospital, a form of induction, or it just breaks while I'm laboring. Are you pregnant and planning a hospital birth? You don't need a birth plan. You need a birth vision. In my opinion, birth plans set you up for failure. Yep, I said it. Hear me out before you turn off this podcast. You may think that by downloading a generic birth plan, it means you're in control. The truth is it's not that simple. No one can control exactly how their birth will go. There are way too many variables. What every pregnant person wants is to walk into the hospital pregnant and to walk out with a healthy newborn in their arms. The journey in between is the murky part. It's hard to know what issues might come up that need to be addressed. If you focus your energy on a birth vision rather than giving your power to a birth plan, you can empower yourself to make the best choices for you and your baby. 
That's why you need to get into my Empowered Hospital Birth Program. As a labor nurse and mindset coach, I can help guide you through the process of maintaining the calm autonomy that will help you achieve the birth vision you desire. In my Empowered Hospital Birth Program, I will help you identify the source of anxiety you have surrounding hospital birth, fill in knowledge gaps to make sure that you are fully informed and confident, learn key phrases so you can better communicate with your medical team, emotionally process your fears so that they don't hold power over you. Go to kellyhoff.com backslash empowered to book a free 30-minute private birth vision call where we will identify your top fears and must-haves and gain clarity on exactly how you want to feel in the birth space. That's K-E-L-L-Y-H-O-F dot com backslash empowered. I'm honored to be a part of your birth journey. Okay, so then was it shortly after your water broke all four times that your baby was born? Yeah, I don't, I, that's what I was trying to, I don't remember. Like, oh, got with, it. Yeah, it was But with Jayden. the fourth, it was definitely clear. Yeah, that that's yeah. <laughs> yep, they, they, that's, that was the plan. We'll break your water, then we'll give you the epidural, and then see how you progress. They broke my water, trying to give me the epidural, and he was here. His head let's, was coming yeah, out. Let's my... never try that again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, thank you. So at 36 weeks, let's get you the epidural and yeah. see what happens. <laughs> Perfect. (laughs) So after that one, though, then my fifth one, they they induced me because they were scared of my water breaking. And I still wanted to use my midwives, but we had moved. We were an hour away from the hospital, but I loved my midwives. So I wanted to continue to use them. So when I got to 38 weeks, they decided to induce me because of my water breaking and the chance of higher blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So His was a setup induction, but I was scared about Pitocin. And I said, you know, you're still going to get the epidural, but we'll try to not use Pitocin as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But they they, they ended up having to give me a little bit of Pitocin. And his was probably the longest, the longest induction and and birth. But I I was fine with it. I think it was like six hours total in laboring. But I was completely fine with it because I had the epidural. I actually got one. At first, the left side was not working. So they had to come Mm -hmm. in and, and redo it. Um, but it was fantastic that she came in a couple hours later. She's like, you ready to push? I'm like, I don't think so. She's like, no, you are. You, you got to get ready to push. We're at 10 centimeters. I'm like, oh my God, that's fantastic. I felt nothing. It was amazing. I was so mad at myself for not getting an epidural for the other ones because it was amazing. <laughs> it was fantastic. But yeah, and I had him. They broke my water in about a half hour later. They're like, you're ready to push. But I don't feel like I'm ready to push. And I was actually scared, to be honest, because I didn't have any of the feelings i had no yeah. feelings but i'm he was out within a couple of minutes so that's it so was, it's so weird to not feel anything yeah very weird especially like the first like it was i thought my body was tearing apart and then to go to the epidural and not feel anything it was amazing it was so yeah. nice that's so amazing nice. so that was five yep that was that was five. an induction yep so then the and the one before the current that you're about to right. deliver. Yep, my last one. Yeah. Is six. Yep. And that I went in for an appointment and my blood pressure was slightly high. And I was I wasn't even I was almost 37 weeks then. All my others I had pretty like Ryder, the the last one. I had him at 38 weeks. But all the ones before that I was either at my due date or over my due date. But with him, I wasn't even 37 weeks yet. And they checked my blood pressure, went in for just a normal appointment and my blood pressure was slightly high. So like we're inducing you. We're not messing around. Then when I had to go, like I just walked from the appointment up to the labor and delivery and I was already contracting. So I, when you said the blood pressure thing, like maybe that's me being in labor and that's when my blood pressure starts going up. And well, another reason could be that preeclampsia can speed up labor at times. Oh yeah. So I don't know if you were ever officially diagnosed. Um, just the first would- one. Yeah, they yeah. have to do labs and all that stuff, but it sounds like they didn't have yeah. much time to diagnose you <laughs> yeah. with the others. Yeah, so it could be either. It could be that yeah. maybe it was this, I mean, just guessing because we don't have any like labs or anything to back sure, it up. Sure, sure. It's possibly that, possible that your blood pressure was going up and that was yeah. just indicating that you were in labor, your body yeah. was in labor, or maybe the preeclampsia caused the labor. Right, yep, but very, kind of a very could be. Two. But yeah, so they, they still gave me Pitocin because that's the first one, like, I, I was at zero pretty much, zero centimeters when they checked me and stuff. So they still gave me Pitocin, but I had an epidural. I think that was my longest labor, which was my last one. I think 
I, I know my induction was around 11 and we ended up having him at, I think it was four in the afternoon. So I think he was my longest, but again, once they break my, now they know once you break my water, you just got to stay there and just wait. It's just going to be a couple of minutes. Just <laughs> hold your hand out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's why I was like, I can't believe it's taken so long. Cause usually I'm, I'm done by now. And she's like, don't want me to break your water. I'm like, yes, please. Can we get this get moving? The on the road. <laughs> yeah. And then he was, he was here. So there was another great birthing experience with the epidural and knowing what was going on and, and the midwives. So yeah. And here I am with my seventh. So amazing. <laughs> Do you have a stop yet? How how far along are you right now? 30 weeks. Okay. So yeah. do they have a plan for an induction and are you close to the same hospital? Yeah. Well, I'm still about an hour away. And they said because of my advanced maternal age, which yeah. I get that saying, I get that saying, but then I've heard geriatric pregnancy yeah, and elderly <laughs> multigravida or whatever. I'm like, uh-huh. are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> 39 years old and you're using geriatric. Like that's really yeah. been bothering me, but um, they won't let me go past 39 weeks, but because of my age, I'm closely monitored. And beginning next week, I will start a month or weekly ultrasounds and appointments mm-hmm. and uh, see how it goes from there. But yeah, right now it's just that they're saying 39 weeks, but I bet it will be before that. So His- if history repeats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So oh. I think a lot of my listeners want to know like how they can be ready for birth. When I see patients in the hospital, I I see that there's a lot of people that have a lot of fear surrounding the process and either they over prepare to the point where they want to control every aspect of it Mm -hmm. or they just don't want to think about it and kind of go in without any real knowledge and just kind of hope to wing it. And mm-hmm. I feel like you can yeah. be a testament to both ways, maybe yeah. <laughs> causing trauma. <laughs> yeah. With my first, I knew nothing. I had no real support, no, no info, no nothing. And then the, the whole birth was awful. So after that, I really dived into like message groups or support groups online. And that helped immensely. And I know the last few pregnancies I've had, I love watching live births or pregnancy vlogs on youtube like my husband makes fun of me because he's like you've done it enough do you really need to watch other people it's just a way for me to prepare and find out what other people go through how they deal with it and i i watch a pregnancy vlog probably every night (laughs) and and a birth vlog just because I, i like i mean i've done it before i know i know what to do but there's so many different scenarios and cases that could happen it's just mentally preparing for what could happen for you. So I love that kind of preparing and prepping, watching what other people go through and listening to their birth stories and stuff. I'm kind of addicted to birth stories, I feel like. <laughs> I have a whole podcast on it, so maybe I am yeah. too. But <laughs> yeah. 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 I know a lot of people that are. Yeah. Yeah. So watching those and like going through all the different ones I've gone through, I know it's planned for the worst, hope for the best. And you can't, want it to happen exactly how you want it to happen you got to be open but to know what could happen is Mm -hmm. always makes me feel better anyways right yeah and being able to pivot and make those decisions like if you're given an option which one resonates with you and if there's a I think there's a lot of if there's an option that you prefer to avoid yeah then when would you be open to going that route right knowing what your cutoff is Yeah, because saying I absolutely don't want this ends up removing options from the table that might actually help you get the outcome you want. Yep. And that was my fifth with my fifth pregnancy with Ryder. That's that's what it was, because that was the one that I actually had to be induced for. And I was still scared of Pitocin, even though I had every uh, I was dead set on getting an epidural. um, I was still really scared of the Pitocin and I'm talking to my midwives and stuff. They said we will do everything we can to not do the Pitocin. But if we get to that point and you're not progressing, it's going to be worse for you to not progress. And and then I was like, OK, but as long as they were trying to work with me and not just force the Pitocin on me, it made me feel a lot better. It made me feel like I was in control because they were like, we won't do anything. They even did that with Miles. We won't do anything you don't want us to do, but let's just start out slowly and see what happens. And then I was OK. They always asked, is OK if we get up the Pitocin? Yes, yes, we're good. But yeah, um, being able to be part of that decision making was was awesome yeah I love that they put you in the driver's seat because I I I just hear so much so that moms have their autonomy taken away and yeah that alone will cause trauma right and knowing like with Jane and I didn't know anything I knew nothing Mm -hmm. so just knowing and 
preparing, I think it will make a world of difference because Jaden's was awful. My first one, it was awful, terrible, mm -hmm. but it taught me to learn and ask questions and find out more. And now I'm obsessed with pregnancy vlogs. So yeah, there's it helps. so many options out there now. Yeah, yeah, it really. Is. Yeah, having pregnancy for for 18 years, like it's it's really changed, and mm -hmm. and how I prepare now has really changed because I didn't do anything with Jaden, even with Brody. I we had some message groups. But that was still 16 years ago. Now I feel like you have support and groups everywhere. There's 80,000 of them if you want to be a part of them. So, yeah, it's nice. Yeah, pick a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you kind of already answered this, but this is an interesting question to me. Was there anything about your any of your birthing experiences, positive or negative, that has stuck with you that you tend to share with new mothers? No, I mean, the Potosa, I, I, mm -hmm. with Jade and that Potosa, and I'm like, oh, I'm trying to do everything you can to avoid it. <laughs> and I always, like, everyone always says, oh, it's so, you're so lucky you go so fast, but that's a lot of pain mm -hmm. and a little short amount of time. But that's, that's usually the only thing I say, because I've been pregnant a lot and I get lots of comments and I get mad sometimes at all the comments about how many times I've been pregnant and stuff. So to me, I don't like to talk to people about pregnancies because I don't know if they're offended or how they act. So I don't really push my pregnancy stories on other people unless they ask. Yeah. And I keep it to myself, but I'm scared of Pitocin. So <laughs> that'll be the only thing I think I'd say that if someone says they have to get Pitocin, get the epidural, get the epidural. Yeah. <laughs> but that's about it. That is true. I think there's a lot of misconception with Pitocin that a lot of midwives will say that Pitocin is worse than real labor. But there's studies that show that once you have Pitocin, your body will kick into natural labor. And so then you have your regular oxytocin, your natural oxytocin plus the Pitocin, yeah. you kind of have to back off. So right. that's always an, something that could potentially happen. Yeah. But yep. the I feel problem, that's what happened with like writer yeah. miles. Well, even, yeah. if, even if that doesn't happen, the the problem is you're upping it at not necessarily the natural way that your body would progress. It's just like, right. oh, we're going to, yeah. we're going to 20 minutes later, go up and then 20 minutes later, go up and your body's right. not necessarily ready for that. Yeah. So yep. it can be kind of jarring. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what was, was the first. They just kept up in it and up in it and up in it. <laughs> yeah. It was awful. I'm, I'm curious because I also like to focus on how to support people in pregnancy and childbirth and beyond. What are some of the things that people say to you about your pregnancies? Oh, my that... gosh. Just because we have so many kids. Mm -hmm. Like, don't you know how that happens? Or don't you? I always tell everyone there's nothing on TV. <laughs> Just leave me alone. There's nothing on TV. I mean, a lot of people are happy for us. Don't get me wrong. Like, we get mm -hmm. we do get a lot of positive feedback and stuff. But you always get negative feedback. And it's like, what difference does it make? How many kids I have? Like, it doesn't yeah. affect you any way, shape or form. So, like telling me i need a different bed or not to sleep with my husband like give me a break how old are you oh my goodness <laughs> we get those kind of comments and i mean no i might get 20 good comments but then i get two bad comments and it just irritates me so like with miles our last one we told nobody i told my mom mm -hmm. some family we told nobody and we had him during covid so i didn't have to see anybody either so he was a complete surprise to everybody and it was so nice like i didn't have to worry about people knowing i'm pregnant and coming up and touching me and asking me questions and like it was it was really nice with him this one I wasn't going to tell anybody either but my mom has recently died and mm -hmm. this pregnancy it seems like it's a big sign from my mom that I want to share with people so I ended up telling everybody after a first trimester and so now I'm like I don't care it's a cool story between me and my mom so I am sharing it but for the most part it's just the negative comments just suck and drives me mad do you think the negative comments are just people joking or people i say i think for the most part people are joking i don't think yeah. a lot of people mean mean anything by it i just take mm -hmm. it personal <laughs> so oh. that's all i just think it's so interesting how people react to people that are pregnant i personally i was pregnant twice and i was done and i'm yeah. just like how <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> yeah. How are you physically capable of doing more than two? I like, know. Tell me your secret. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. That's what my son, my sixteen-year-old son. He ha he has the most problem with change. He hates. He hates change. Mm -hmm. He always. Every time we tell him that we're pregnant, he gets a little upset about it. And this time it was, Mom, you're old. You're not gonna be able to do it. You're gonna. You're not gonna be able to physically do it. I'm like, I'll be fine. I'm exhausted. I am yeah. so exhausted. I actually, I just got a notification on my phone that over the past 18 months, my steps have like 
drop drastically. But it's it's you know because it tracks you, you know, and it says the past eighteen months you've really slowed down. Yeah, no crap. <laughs> I'm almost <laughs> there's a human pregnant. in here. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, but honestly, like a lot of people ask, like, is it? it, it it's hard. It's crazy, and it is. But my oldest, my oldest three are eighteen, sixteen, and fourteen. Like they are huge helpers, and my nine year old is even a, a good helper. And they, it's it's not as bad as it was. I have three under three when Haley was born for like a month. That was crazy, but now having seven, it's really not that bad because the older kids help a lot. So it's not it's not terrible at all. So you talked about having three under three. What was the recovery like? Like I know a lot of people talk about postpartum. Did you feel like you were well supported? Yeah. Yeah. With, with all those, I, I definitely did. I mean, my husband worked, but we live so close to my mom, my sister, and my grandma. And there's even times where I'm like, I, I got this guys, but you know, they come and clean my house and make me food. I want to watch the baby while I slept. And like the, the support was amazing. My recovery with, with most of my babies has been very easy. The last one with Miles, by that time, my grandma was really old and she couldn't help much, but my mom couldn't come around because of COVID. I had him April 13th and we shut down March 17th or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like we were on total shutdown, but it was good because everybody was home. Like all my kids were home. My husband was home. Everybody was home. So, but they're, they're not near as good as my mom and grandma, (laughs) but but they were pros. Yeah. Yeah. But that was, it was, it was good. This one I am scared about because the kids will still be in school when we have her and my husband, he always takes off while I'm in the hospital. He might take off the day we uh, he will take off the day we come home we might take off the a day after but a lot of times he doesn't and my mom and grandma died last year so i have i'll have nobody and there's talk maybe possibly about a c-section because she's breached she's been breached the whole time but i know she has time to time yeah. to move but it's just a conversation i'm like oh my gosh like say they induce that I, I do a c-section like monday or tuesday and i'm i'm home during the week and like i don't have that weekend where the kids are home so I am scared about this one because I don't have my my mom and grandma anymore and the kids will be in school. So and I'll still have Miles home. He's three, almost four. Mm-hmm. So I'll be having a newborn with a four year old by myself. So yeah. I'm prepping. I'm figuring out freezer meals and all that stuff. I've completely cleaned my house. I already got my kids set up with chore charts for, wow. for when I'm done. So hopefully it won't be bad. But all yeah, this on one deck. I'm scared about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you have childcare at all for your for your three almost? No, three nope. That's why I like real estate, my job, because I can take him with me. I work around my own oh. schedule. He was supposed to go to our our school district offers uh pre K counts for three year olds, but the state cut the funding this year. So he wasn't mm-hmm. able to go. So he's home with me. But he's pretty good. He's a good kid. But yeah, no no child care. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> He'll be home I with me. He's a real estate pro now. Yeah, he hates it. <laughs> Casey, oh, my does. other kid, yeah, my other kid, I had to take him a lot and he loved it. He was great. He sold houses for me. He loved talking to people. Miles hates it. He doesn't want to talk to anybody. He wants to stay in the car and not do anything. <laughs> he doesn't like it, but he's he's fine. But he'll be in school next year. So, but we'll see how this one goes with no, with my mom and grandma not here and the kids will be in school. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. You said that there was a story behind that with your mom and your pregnancy. Yeah. Do you care to share? Or yeah, no, I will. I, I love sharing it. So I, after my mom died, I wasn't planning on having another kid anyways, but I, I said I would never have another kid. I would never want to bring another kid in this world that doesn't know my mom. My mom was like, my mom was a good mom. But she was an amazing grandma. She was so good to my kids. She's like my kids' third parent. She's amazing. So after she died, I'm like, nope, we're done. And I don't know if this is TMI, but my periods are usually at the beginning of every month. And for some reason, it threw in another period in the middle of August that it shouldn't have. So I miraculously got pregnant and I denied it for a while. Like I knew, I know my body, I've been pregnant before, I knew, but I didn't want to admit it. And my son had Lyme disease like at that same time. So like maybe that's what I have. Maybe I have Lyme disease. Maybe that's why I'm tired and achy and blah, blah, blah. And I ended up telling my husband eventually in a fit of rage because I was mad about something else and I was just depressed and I was so mad I might be pregnant again with without my mom. And he finally is like, dude, what's wrong? So I rambled off all these other things that are wrong. And at the end, I'm like, and I think I'm pregnant again. I was so mad. I was depressed for like a month and a half. So I did not want to have a baby without my mom at all. Like, I don't want to do it without her. 
And Dustin kept bugging me, you need to go get a test, you need to go get a test, we got to figure it out. And a friend of mine was pregnant and she worked for the midwives that I, I used to go to. And I looked it up and they weren't at the office. It looked like they had closed. And I was like, I am not doing this without my midwives. If I don't have my midwives, I'm really, I, no one's going to know. I will have the baby here. Nobody, I don't want to do this. So I messaged her and she's like, yeah, we just moved to the hospital. And she's like, why? And I'm like, well, I think I might be pregnant, but I'm really upset about it because of my mom. And my mom always said that I'd have seven kids selling seven. And I was telling her that story. And she's like, Steph, your mom loved your kids. Like her greatest gift in life was your kids. Like her grandkids were it. She's like, why? I think it's a gift from your mom, not like a bad thing about your mom not being able to be here. And I'm like, oh my God, if that's true. I'm being a total idiot about it. <laughs> and so that day I was supposed to get my cell phone. I ordered a cell phone. I know this is so stupid. And it was supposed to be delivered and I had to sign for it. And so I'm like, Maybe I'll go get a test, but I can't get a test because I got to wait for my cell phone. Two seconds later, UPS shows up with my cell phone. So get my cell phone, get it set up. I had a um, app on my phone called Boxer. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's like a walkie talkie. Mm -hmm. You know, you talk. Yeah. And I did that with a lot of my friends. My best friend, I messaged her and I told her what this friend of mine had said. And I'm crying. So like, I'm going to have to go get a test and it's got to be positive. I don't know what I'm going to do without my mom. Like I'm blubbering, crying when I'm talking to her. I get my kid ready. We go to Walmart to get a test. And this, I now have my new phone. And I open up that Voxer app and all these messages from two years ago pop up. And one of them is from my mom. And so it's all of my messages from my mom. It's me and her talking, laughing. So while I'm walking through the store to get this pregnancy test, I hear my mom talking and laughing with me and joking get the pregnancy test, come home, take it. It was positive. And I wasn't mad. Like I thought I'd be mad, but I think because like, I kind of felt like I had my mom with me. I wasn't mad. I was comforted. Actually, what I want to do is go downstairs and get my phone and screen record those messages, but they were gone. They were, they were oh gone. They were, they were nowhere to be found. And the last message that she had sent me on that picture or on that app was a picture of a weeping willow tree. And she had sent that to me on uh, May 22nd of 2020. And I don't know why she sent it. I said, I saved it. I sent it to my sister. I'm like, why would mom send me a picture of this willow tree? She had no idea. All my other pregnancies, me and my husband have fought tooth and nail on the names of our kids. All of them. It's, it's always a dead fight. Haley, my third one, we decided her name while I was pushing. And so the, there's that picture of that willow. And I ended up telling Dustin, like, I think I'll be okay with it if it's a girl and I can name her willow Catherine. my mom's name was Catherine, and he's like you know it's funny ever since you found out you're pregnant he's had the song stuck in his head my husband's a musician he's a great guitar player and singer and it's a, a it's a song that's already out there but he's been singing it and it was called the girl that can even make a weeping willow smile so with her picture and his song that that was a thing she sent me that picture on may 22nd 2022 my due date's may 22nd i ended up getting a tattoo after she died of an angel holding a baby and to me it was like a mom as an angel because it was holding a baby but now it's like my mom as an angel giving me a baby and i got that before i even knew i was pregnant so there there have just been so many things that i feel like my mom's definitely tied to this one and it's been so emotional so i mean pregnancy is emotional anyways but doing it without my mom but feeling like my mom's here and i know a day of when the baby's born i'm going to be an absolute wreck but yeah that's the that's the story behind behind this one so it is a girl and her name will be willow Catherine. I love that. That is yeah. so. I don't. I don't love that your mom. Yeah. Is not here. But yeah. I thank just you. Love that she has sent you this gift. Yeah. Yep. And now, now that I see it like that, I am super excited. I was really depressed, really upset for a while, but I'm really excited. And that's what all my kids are like. This one's your favorite. It doesn't matter what this one does because it's grandma's. <laughs> She's already your favorite. Yep. Yep. She is. <laughs> get is get used is. to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep and she's the first girl i've had in 14 years like all the uh, Haley was my last girl and she's 14 years old now so this is the first girl in a long time so i'm i'm pretty excited wow but yeah so that's that story that's amazing yeah oh, i had one that i was gonna ask before oh okay so you said that it was pretty easy to push even without yeah. the epidural yeah was there anything that you had to do specifically to kind of tap into that muscle i don't group? I don't think so. I was really scared of it with Ryder and Miles, the last two, because I was so numb. I was really scared about it, but it just two, three pushes, they were out. So 
I think by that time, my body just knows mm. what, what to like that. There was, there's was nothing I had to do, nothing I had to tap into, nothing I had to think of. Like I know from watching pregnancy vlogs and everything, I was like, you know, channel the energy downward, do this and that. And I just, I didn't, I didn't have to. I think my body just knows now. The how, energy was just how, coming out of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just knows what to do. Whether you wanted an epidural or not. Yeah, like, no. exactly. Yeah. So. so, yeah, then so then the, the the only other thing that I would ask is if you could go back and talk to yourself before that first. Yeah. Pregnancy, do you have a message for yourself? I, I would definitely find out, talk to different OBs and midwives and do more research on being inducted. And then like with the swelling that I had that was so bad and that one, I gained like 90 pounds. Like I gained a lot of weight with that first one. So I feel like there were so many signs and symptoms that something wasn't right. But I, I just listened to the doctor. Like I asked a question. He said, no, you're fine. I didn't advocate for myself at all. I just took his word for it. So, and I feel like if I would have pushed more, I don't think I would have actually been actually diagnosed with preeclampsia. Like they could have done stuff before, but, and I mean, I've had six pregnancies since then and I haven't had preeclampsia yet because they induced me before, you know, so. Mm Yeah. I would just learn more and not just take doctor's word for it. Not saying I'm a doctor. I'm just saying advocate well, for yourself. Well, find a doctor more. that you can trust and that you yeah. align with and learn more yourself so that you know the science. Yeah. Yep. Yep, that'd be it. But other than that, I don't I don't think anything and I obviously I'm I must be okay with pregnancy and birth because I do it enough. <laughs> so we'll we'll leave it at that. Did you do anything like with your mind? Do you feel like I mean, it sounded like you had a lot of support, but do you think that you needed to do anything differently with like your mindset or your emotional preparation? When I'm scared for the induction, I I wish I'd I'd calm myself down more and and know like I'll be okay. Like I survived the first one, <laughs> but it was mm-hmm. it was scary. I wish I could calm myself down more, and not be so scared. Because like I mean, I was so scared. I was crying on my way home. I was crying to the hospital, especially with Haley, because that was the first one that they were going to induce me with, but I wound up going natural, but to just calm down, like, I, I, you'll be okay. <laughs> you'll be okay. They're not going to let you like anything terrible happen. And it's, it's pain. It's temporary. And obviously we do it all the time. Women will still mm-hmm. keep getting pregnant and keep doing it. So like maybe that type of mindset, but other than that, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very laid back and uh, kind of go with the flow. I want to know everything. So I'm prepared yeah. now, but other than that, just go with the flow. Yeah. But, well, is there anything else that you wanted to share that we haven't covered? I don't think so. Not not about like birthing and stuff. I I think I I hit on everything. And I'm glad you let me share that story about my mom. So yeah, I think I'm I'm good. Awesome. Well, I am so happy that you got to share all your stories with me. Was there anything that you wanted to share about your your podcast or your oh website? Sure. I mean, if you want to check me out, it's it's a little bit of. Like my life with six kids is absolutely crazy and trying to do a real estate business and grow that. And then I try, I do try to do some more real estate stuff, but a lot of it lately has just been how crazy my life is. And I'm getting ready (laughs) to have a daughter that's graduating and I'm going to have a newborn and then all the other, like all my kids are in travel sports and stuff. So it's just, it's chaos all the time. So that's what it's about. And I post weekly and yeah, it's real life, real estate, real deal. If anybody wants to check it out, feel free. Amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It was hard. Like going back through all my pregnancies, I'm like, oh my God, I can't remember them all. That's what a uh, quick little story with this one. They just sent me a packet at first to go through like my history and stuff. And they, they ask you like the time you had your baby, how, how far along you were, like all this stuff. Like, I can't remember. That was 18 <laughs> years ago. Like, I don't remember them all and I'm filling it out and I'm counting them and I thought I had it all done. I only had five kids. I missed one. I missed a kid. (laughs) Just check your files. I've had everyone but the first one's been with you guys. Just check your files. But wow. Yeah, that's that's that. But I'll leave you with that. Yeah. (laughs) You start to lose count. (laughs) Yeah, I do. And the time I was texting my son before we came on because he's really good with numbers. I'm like, what time did I have Ryder? I got to figure out how long this pregnant, this labor was. And he was able to tell me the times I had them all. I'm like, thanks, bro. Oh, goodness. (laughs) But yeah, (laughs) that's all. Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning into my podcast. If you enjoyed what you heard, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future episodes. 
Don't forget to share the podcast with a friend who can benefit from the valuable insights that we share here. And if you could take a moment to leave a five-star rating and review, it would mean the world to me. If you're ready to work one-on-one with me to embark on a transformational journey towards a confident and empowered hospital birth experience, go to kellyhoff.com backslash empowered and enroll in my Empowered Hospital Birth Coaching Program. Together, we'll create a roadmap to a birth experience that you'll cherish forever. That's K-E-L-L-Y-H-O-F dot com backslash empowered. Let's make your birth experience extraordinary.